bubble gum. Kids are safe and having fun. I love Lucy on TV. Pledge allegiance, living free. Heroes won and bad men lost. We all look to the cross. Some things we cherish now are gone. And don't it make you feel? Like you wanna go back home Popsicles in the yard Walk with mama to the park Daddy come play ball with me Hide and seek, let's climb a tree Church on Sunday, all dressed up Sunday dinner sure is good Peace was found across our land And don't it make you feel Like you want to go back home Let's go home, America Back to the good old days Let's go back to where we've been burned a flag proudly stood when it was raised didn't have to lock the doors we loved each other and the Lord teachers taught the golden rule God was welcome in our schools together we would take a stand and don't it make you feel like you want to go back home Let's go home America Back to the good old days Let's go back to where we've been Where people bowed and prayed Where families stayed together We all knew right from wrong Won't you pray with me Please pray with me, America. Won't you stand with me, America? Don't you think it's time to go back Good morning and welcome to Mountaintop Cowboy Church. It's a delight to come to you again today, either through Facebook or from the YouTube channel. We're looking this morning at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16, uh, where the, the Apostle Paul says this, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. This morning we're going to talk to you about day by day. You know, when we receive the grace of God, it's day by day. Uh, I love what uh, Luke said in uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 3. Uh, give us this day our daily bread. Literally, day by day. And give us day by day our bread. Grace is measured into a time. Mercy is measured into a time. Everything that God gives us is, is, is mentioned or divided into days. He gives us light to rule the day in Genesis and a light to rule the night, the sun and the moon. Everything is by the day. And so when we look at uh, the ability to say, God, I, just, I don't need to see what food you're going to give me next month, just today. 
it helps us to walk by faith. It helps us to not to have to see the complete plan of God today, just day by day by day. And that's why when we, when we consider our days, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto His wisdom. I tell you, we're living in the evil days, and because of that, uh, I love what the writer uh, uh, Paul said in Ephesians, the days are evil. Redeem them, buy them back. We are in an evil day. We are in a counter-cultural war with literally everyone and everybody. Everyone and everybody has come to the forefront of what this battle actually is and the battle for our, uh, our culture, the battle for whether or not we're going to live our lives in any normalcy from here on out. And so there's all sorts of cultural battles. A young pastor said to me the other day, how can I keep from being criticized? <laughs> I said, quit or die. Uh, if I speak about marriage being between a man and a woman, uh, I'm, I'm called narrow-minded. If I speak about the uh, LBGTQ community as not being on any biblical foundation whatsoever, then I'm called a bigot or a racist. So you see, when a believer takes a stand upon the Word of God, and it does not matter what the subject material is, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. I promise you it will draw criticism, and this is the cultural war that we are in today. Anyone who does not agree with this new paradigm shift, this new algorithm that is teaching us to solve problems by a brand new way, uh, more and more we're hearing talk of globalism. Uh, pr a former President Obama, in one of his speeches when he was still president, said, it is now more ready than ever for the world to come together in a global system of management. Meaning what? Meaning that the worse that things get, the, the less likely a nation is going to be able to take care of our own problems. We need to, to come together with a one world government. Many young ministers have, have never seen a, a period like uh, this in which there is a, such a need to stand, such a cause to stand for. And, and in fact, many don't believe that it's going to be anything different, that this is an inconvenience. Folks, this is the open door for what's next. Um, many feel that taking the chip or being forced to take a vaccine or to carry a vaccination card is just part of the new normal. And that's how all lives change. It's not a big deal, just a new part of the normal. And so we are in a cultural war. Christians in this country are counter cultural meaning we are going against the grain and everything that is happening is now going to become the believer's fault the governor of indiana has declared war on the church i guess and in which he is now dictated above any retail center any other meeting center in the state of indiana only the church is confined to only 10 people can meet no communion no any other activities whatsoever he has no right authority or constitutional guide for such behavior. So we are in a cultural war. So to that young minister and, and others who say, how can I keep from being criticized? Do nothing. Do absolutely nothing. Quit or die. Day by day is how we receive the grace of God. Day by day is how we receive his mercy. Day by day is how we receive his blessings. And so when Paul says in verse 16, uh, therefore we do not lose heart. Today I want to talk to you about not being discouraged because the world is not going to agree with you as a believer. The world is not going to see your opinion as valid or that your philosophy of life is relevant in the new normalcy. So as we look about it, we're going to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul says in, in verses 1 through 6, he says, we have, therefore seeing we have this ministry, that's the first thing we have, we have this ministry, we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. What do we have? We have this ministry. Your life is ministry. Every time that you breathe in or out anything Jesus, anything loving, anything caring, anything other-centered, anything where groceries are handed to someone else or money comes from your 
hand into another hand. That's ministry. And ministry is not confined to the four walls of a church. We've learned that very well over the last three and a half months. But we have this ministry. What are you going to do with it? And Paul says, seeing that we have this ministry, we faint not. We don't lose heart. Because he goes on to say that the God of this age, look in verse 4, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who is the God of this age? It's a little g. And you can say that is Antichrist. But Paul doesn't mention the term Antichrist like John does. But he says the God of this age has blinded those. So the more that we attempt to tell this culture uh, that we're in about Jesus Christ and about his love, his forgiveness, his acceptance, and that you can lay these sins down, you can lay these attitudes down, you can lay your past behaviors down, and Jesus Christ uh, certainly has paid in an atonement for your sin. You repent of that. Change your mind. Turn your heart from it. Now, we have this ministry, and the God of this age has blinded the hearts of many. And then he goes on to say, but the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ is light. So do you see the parallel shift? The God of this age is dark. It's blinding those who would see the truth. And that's why the truth speaks so difficult into the hearts of this culture. They do not want to hear truth. Truth to them is deciding if I want this to be acceptable in my life. That's why everything is a, a, a relevant neutral. Everything is relevant neutral, meaning I'll decide if it's right or wrong. I'll decide if this is true or not. And when we hear the word of God, we know that it is truth. And when, when mankind says of God's word, I don't want to hear that. That's the God of this age saying, I'm going to blind their eyes. So the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ is light. And uh, verse 5, for we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ. For the, glory, the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. We have this ministry, and it's time to shine that upon the world. Not what we're doing. Uh, not asking for credits. Not asking for people to recognize us. Not asking uh, to be uh, winning an award for all that we do during COVID-19. But no, shine the light of Jesus Christ upon them. Not the light of our works, but the light of the gospel. That is what changes hearts. We have this ministry, and that's what we are to do with it. Many years ago, there was a very young minister who had never married, and he was worried about some unresolved conflicts. Things got really bad, got bad in the church, got bad in all of his relationships, and it literally ruined his health. He was advised to take a trip. So uh, after being weeks and weeks and weeks in bed and going through uh, a desperate time, depression, and anger, he finally was able to get out of bed and he decided to take a trip. So he got aboard a sailing ship and he was going uh, across the tip of Italy and he was in the Mediterranean Sea. The, the winds floundered and when they did, the boat stopped and it was stop day after day after day after day. And he kept a journal. And after about a week of this, day by day, day by day, he couldn't take it anymore. And he went to the bottom of that ship, and there he cried out to God. He prayed. He wrestled with God. He fought with God uh, about what all was going on in his life. And finally, he, he gave in to what God was having him do in his life. And because of that, uh, he got his life turned around. And he, and he wrote a hymn that became very popular. And of course, it's in Old English, so it's not anything that comes to mind. But he was talking about, Lord, I do not need to see all that is ahead. Just one step will do. Just one step will do. I don't need to see all the days ahead. Just one day at a time before his life was changed. And you may be the type of person that wants it all changed today. You want everything fixed today. You want everything to be made right today. You want to have it all done. And to an extent, we're all that way. If I start a project, I want to finish that project. I won't stop hardly until it's done. Why? I want to see it completed, marked off, and move on to the next thing. But life is not that way. Day by day, we have this ministry. And the God of this age has blinded the hearts of many. But the light of the glorious gospel shines upon them. And we know that darkness cannot conquer light. Light conquers darkness. 
So day by day, we have this ministry. Now, what is your ministry? Your ministry is not going to church for an hour. That's where we, we recharge our batteries. That's where we get a new uh, perspective, or that's where we rededicate ourselves, or that's where we get charged toward our calling. No, I'm talking about what is it that you do in Christ's name that is a day-by-day -day thing with you. That is your ministry. That's who you are. That's what you're going to be doing until the day he takes you out. So day by day, Paul says, we have this ministry. And seeing that we have this ministry, we faint not. We faint at the most inopportune times. We lose heart at the most inopportune times. Paul reminds us, don't lose heart. Do not quit here. Gosh, I hate the word quit. I hate the word compromise. And you ought to cut them out of your dictionary. You ought to go as soon as this message is over and cut them both out of your dictionary. They both start with a K. Quit and compromise. I hate those words because it compromises our character. It demeans who Christ is in us. When we compromise or we give in to that which we know is wrong, I hate it when I do that. And I hate it when I quit on something. I hate it when I give up on somebody. I hate it when I walk away uh, f from a ministry challenge or a personnel challenge or, a, or a, an event challenge. Many years ago, I was in uh, Nicaragua, I was in Managua, but we were going up the volcano road and into a city in, in which we were to hold a crusade there. And uh, our advance team had gone in and had a, an old soccer stadium rented. Oh, I can remember it as though it was yesterday. And we're standing in the middle of that soccer stadium, and it's dilapidated. I was, I was frightened for the people who were going to sit in it. It had been left alone a long, long time. We had charter buses, old school buses, running in churches all over that country. We had special guests coming in, 100 churches or more actively involved, bringing their people, and what a time it was. But I'm out there in the middle of that crusade field, which was an old, dilapidated soccer stadium. We fell on our knees and began to pray. And I tell you, fear just took over. I looked around. I said, God, nobody's going to come to this thing. And even if they do come, uh, Lord, this thing's about to fall down. Somebody's going to fall through this thing and get hurt and die. Satan was all over me. Somewhere in the middle of that prayer, I quit wrestling with God, and I gave it over to him. We were hoping that 10,000 people would come that night. But we didn't have 10,000 people. When all the buses came, all of them got in there. We had beautiful music with uh, Spanish and Latin guitars. Oh, it was beautiful. 19,000 people were there the first night. The second night, more than 20,000 people were there. I tell you, I hate it. When I compromise, I hate it when I quit on something. I hate it when God puts me in a, in a position by where I'm going to have to trust them with no controls, no conditions, and say, God, either you do this or we fail. Paul said, we have this ministry, and seeing that we have this ministry day by day, we faint not. Well, there's another principle, verse 7, that he gives to us. But we have this treasure. Not only do we have this ministry, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We have this treasure. Now, everyone likes treasure. As a small child, I looked for buried treasure. I was a pirate, and I was looking for that buried treasure. All of us have, have hoped that we could find a treasure, a, something that was buried. X marks the spot on the map. But we have this treasure, and Paul says in verse 7, we have it in earthen vessels. You know what that is? That's you. That's me. He has placed this treasure, and what is the treasure? In just a moment, we'll, we'll compare these two and combine them. We have this treasure, which is this ministry. This ministry we have that we do in our body, through our body, with our body. Uh, we have it in an earthen vessel. That's your body, the earthen vessel. In fact, he goes on to say, in this earthen vessel, we have this, this treasure in us. Every one of us, we are a treasure. Christ has put us here for a purpose, and our purpose is to be a treasure in someone else's life. 
Now, does anyone in the world consider you to be a treasure? Uh, does anyone in the world think of you when they think of the good things of Jesus Christ? But we have this treasure, and it's bound in an earthen vessel, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. In verse 8, he goes on to say, look, we're hard-pressed right now. We are hard-pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We are perplexed, but we're not in despair. We are persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. And we are always carrying about in this earthen threshold of the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's the earthen vessel. Sort of sounds fragile, doesn't it? Sort of sounds like it could crack, and it can. We're, all of us are bound by our, our physical limitations. All of us are bound by that which our body can or cannot do. There are a lot of things that I can still do that I used to do, but I just used to do them a lot faster. I can still pretty much do anything I ever did. I just need to rest a little while between it. I talked on one of the tailgate talks about hauling hay. My granddaughter called it throwing hay. She had never heard of hauling hay. Now, I can still haul hay. Make no mistake about it. I just need it to be a little more distance between each bale. And I need the tailgate to be about a foot lower, if that would work as well. But we are fragile. These earthen bodies are fragile. My daughter just got out of the hospital this week. Very, very limited diet. Can't eat anything solid. Very weak. Her body right now is fragile, and they don't want her uh, around anyone that could compromise that already weakened immune system. We, we understand. That's the whole principle of this COVID experience that we're going through, is that the weak are very vulnerable. And Paul said, we have this treasure, but the treasure is, is uh, compacted in this earthen vessel that is fragile. Life is fragile. That's why I don't understand the same people who are walking the streets screaming and crying that Black Lives Matter are the same people uh, who are not crying about the, the abortion crime that is going on all over this country. Almost every Planned Parenthood is close to an ethnic neighborhood or to a black area where it's much more uh, easy for a, a black lady to go into Planned Parenthood and convenient for them. Why is there not outrage about that fact? If this life really does matter, why does it not matter until it matters to you? That's just a tragedy. Earthen vessels are fragile. And he says, we have this treasure. And look, inside of this treasure, he says, we're hard-pressed on every side, uh, and, but we're not crushed. We are perplexed. We are persecuted. We are struck down. We're always carrying about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus may be also manifested in our body. So it's fragile, yes, but it's awfully important. My wife grows flowers in earthen vessels, pots. I am forever breaking her clay pots. They're fragile. You can just do that and break one. So they're fragile, but yet they have a beautiful treasure in them. Everyone's life matters, and that life is fragile because it is made in the image of God. And everything that he did in, the, in your creation is good, but it's fragile. And that's why Paul says, listen, look, we're hard pressed, we're perplexed, we're persecuted, we're struck down, and we're always caring about this dying thing. Now that's a long list of fragility. That's a long list of be very cautious, be careful, be quiet here. The body could break, it's overwhelmed. Years ago, when I did a lot of counseling, I was asked on a case, and I went into um, a center, and I'm, I, they were told me where the man was, and uh, it, was, it was in a locked ward, and I knocked on the door, and a voice said on the other side of the door, who is it? I said my name as cheerfully as I could told him why I was there he said come in when I opened the door I was not ready for what I saw which was absolutely nothing black 
It's black dark. I cannot see that man. There are no windows in that room. And I began to speak, and he would answer. So I asked him, I said, would it be okay if I turned the light on? And he said, no. He'd gotten used to the dark. He cared no longer about what light could do for him. He cared no longer about how the light could penetrate the darkness of his heart. That was a scary five minutes. Never was able to help that man. Life can be fragile, so fragile in, in fact that sometimes we're set aside and, and considered to be uh, very, very emotional, physical, fragile. Paul said we have this treasure, but the treasure, the thing is, it's in this fragile system. And because of that, we, we are hard-pressed, we're perplexed, we're persecuted, we're struck down, and we always have a, 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 an aura of the dying of the Lord Jesus in us. But listen, we don't lose heart. We know that this thing of being a Christian is difficult, particularly in a culture like ours today. It's difficult, and we are pressed down. We are perplexed. We are persecuted. We are struck down by much of the world today. Let not your heart be troubled. We don't lose heart. And that's what Paul keeps saying. Day by day, don't lose heart. You only need God's grace for today. You don't need it for tomorrow yet. So we have this ministry. We have this treasure. And the last thing we want to look at this morning is that we have the same spirit, verse 13, 14, and 15. And since we have this same spirit of faith that we, according to whom it is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we spoke. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I spoke it and it became true. We speak it, it becomes true. It becomes part of our being. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you together. We have the same spirit, the same spirit of faith. This is an important part of this. Yes, we have this ministry, and yes, we have this treasure. But yes, we have the same spirit of faith. Doesn't matter what church you belong to, doesn't matter what denominational tag you wear. If you are in the household of faith, if you are part of the body of Christ, we have the same spirit of faith. And, and in fact, Paul says this listen, I believed, therefore I spoke what I believed. And he says, now together in the same household of faith, we believe, therefore we speak, and we believe what we're saying. You see, that's the principle of this same spirit of faith. It won't matter what room a believer walks into or what crisis a believer walks into, what panic a believer walks into, what COVID a believer walks into. We are of the same spirit of faith. You can't beat that. There's nothing more powerful to understand that inside a room of believers that we're all up or operating under the same spirit of faith. How thankful we are of that. It is the same faith. For there is one faith. There is one God. There is one baptism. There is one Lord. There is only one Jesus. And there is this one faith that we're all a part of, regardless of your denominational tag. Paul said, 13, 14, 15, we have this same faith spirit of faith because of that what I believed I spoke and then when we're all together what we believe we spoke therefore we spoke same faith you want to know why it's important for the churches to get back to church not so that we can show the world that we can do what we want to do that's not it at all and it's not well uh, some ministers say, well, you guys are going back to church because you think liberals are taking over in your fight. That's not it at all. That's really a bogus argument. We got to get back because that's where our strength is, folks. You think you can handle the Christian life out here watching it one, one hour a week and then heading off to the lake and heading off to what you're going to do. I'm telling you, there's no accountability to that. This is not sustainable. And many, many young ministers are hoping that maybe it just stays this way. It would be easy. No accountability with, with each other. And, and there's no coming into the same room where we believe and speak in faith together. And where we hear the amens and the charges of what God is going to do through faith. 
Yeah, we've got to get back to the church house. No, it is not the, the center of our work. We are this beautiful treasure that is an earthen vessel, but the church is where that vessel comes together. And in all of our fragile states, we become strong. We have this same spirit. Now, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though the outward man is perishing, our inward man is being renewed day by day. Our inward man, renewed day by day. I'm getting stronger on the inside, even though that this great treasure that I have in this earthen vessel that I'm still possessing is getting weaker, and it's obvious. My hair is continually changing colors. My fingers don't move as agile as they used to. My legs are a little bit slower. Everything about me is perishing. It is the nature of all things. One of the laws of thermodynamics is it is the nature of all things to go down. Our bodies are going down. We have to have rest. Why? Because they're going down. I have to take a vitamin. Why? Because I need more energy. But he said, while that's going on in this earth treasure, while the outward man is going down, the inward man is being renewed day by day. That's why when Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, the mind of Christ is the inside, not the outside. This past week, a lady in, in London, England, celebrated her 105th birthday. When asked, of course, the reporter, uh, just how, what do you attribute this to? Good eating, she said, of course. And the second thing, though, she said was, always moving forward every day. I love that, 105 years old. And she said, one of the secrets to this life is always moving forward, going forward, solution-based, day by day by day. So while, while the inside may be falling apart, and you may be feeling exactly that way today, you're falling apart on the inside, fear, depression, anxiety, hurts, harm, cancer, uh, heart attacks, uh, all of the all of the diseases, malady of diabetes, wh whatever this malady is, pain and spasms and and all of the things that are that people are going through, seizures, so many things that the outward man is falling apart. Yet the inward man and woman, boy or girl, is getting stronger because of the faith that is spoken. And I'm telling you, it's time to get out of your chair and go begin speaking faith into someone else's life. Because he said, when I believe, therefore I spoke. Now we believe, therefore we speak. Yes, your church must be speaking faith over every situation, over every crisis. For it is by faith that we please the Lord. And so I end with this. Paul said, yeah, the, the, the old guy's falling apart. The old me, the outside me of what everyone else sees. And, and you know, so many of the people, that, particularly those who are in public eye, actors, actresses, uh, speakers of the house who inject their their body with all kinds of Botox they, to 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 appear to be something they no longer are. They're working far too long on the outward body. It's the inside that people really care about. It's what is on the inside, and that's what Jesus said. You guys are like a a, a whited sepulcher, a graveyard where we continue to whitewash the tomb, but the inside is full of dead man's bones. listen to me. The inward man is what counts. The outward man is going to fall apart and die one of these days. Don't lose heart. Day by day, the inward man is strengthened. That's why I couldn't wait. This will be our fourth or fifth week back into church. I can't wait. Why? Because when we come together, and many of our folks still aren't able to come. I understand that. But And they'll, they'll get what they can from uh, the broadcast and from from others, other churches and other ministers, and they'll they'll continually stay charged that way. And I get that. We're doing the only thing we can know we can do. You're doing the only thing that you know that you can do. But what I'm saying is, when when I speak faith and I'm alone, that's faith. But when we speak faith collectively, and we see it happen, that's when we get charged to move this culture forward for Jesus Christ. You only need grace for today. You don't need tomorrow's meal today only day by day can you expect to see the blessings of God can you expect to see his mercy can you expect to see his grace work on your behalf day by day the outward man is being destroyed or killed but the inward man day by day 
is growing stronger. Confess your sins to Jesus Christ this very moment. If you do not know what it means to be pardoned by Jesus Christ, confess your sins. Tell Jesus you're a sinner. Name the sins. Confess them. Repent of them. Tell God that you're sorry for them. And then ask him into your heart. And by that, he doesn't leave heaven and come into your heart. But what happens is uh, you release all of the hold of all that information, all of that data. He comes in and he takes all of that data, the por por pornographic mind, uh, the larceny of the hands and the heart, the things that have lied and, and, and piled up on you. He takes all of the bad stuff and you swap that for his righteousness. That's confession and that's being saved. Call on the name of the Lord, ask him to save you this day. And then tell us, uh, call us, write us, or, or text us, email us that you got saved and we want to help you in that salvation. Now, many, many of you are believers. Many of you know Christ well. Don't lose heart. Father, how we thank you for this day. While we have this ministry, while we have this treasure, while we have this same spirit, may we not lose heart. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you for tuning in today. We look forward to hearing from you real soon.